Hi, welcome to Bright Hope Creations. I'm Kara, and today this lovely latte has a surprise to share using the new Flippy Flappy Interactive die. And here it is. And here are the pieces that I'm going to use today in fake tan cardstock, along with the Magic Iris Fall Leaves add on, textured dot cardstock from three different packs the lovely latte, ground coffee cardstock, and gold metallic cardstock too. Scripty Autumn Sentiments will finish it up. All right, well, I'm starting with some watercolor paper and some Distress Ink, and I have Peeled Paint, Mustard Seed, Spiced Marmalade, Ripe Persimmon, Aged Mahogany, and Seedless Preserves. And those are kind of my go-to fall inks. I don't know, I should really uh, venture out some more, but you know, you kind of stick with what works. All right, so I just put some water on my brush and picked up some ink, brushing it on the paper in vertical stripes, trying to keep a lot of color there. I don't want it to be too washed out. I'm adding the colors in rainbow order so that they, they blend well together. So moving out to the oranges here, and I love that vibrant ripe persimmon. And moving on to that aged mahogany, and that gives a nice deep red. And then that seedless preserves, which goes right from the red to the violet color. And the next thing to do is set this aside to dry. And I want to make the same colors work for my latte cup. I'm using the dye as a guide to kind of see where I want these colors to go. I want to make sure where he has his eyes and mouth that I have some lighter colors up there. So I'm keeping that in mind as I go along. And I'm also keeping the colors together in rainbow order so that they don't blend into, <laughs> into mud. <laughs> so the oranges are next to the yellows and reds go to the orange. And, and then uh, if I do mix some, it's it's not the biggest deal, but for the most part, I want to make sure that they blend nicely. And I'm also trying to be random. <laughs> we know it's not random, but you know, uh, controlled chaos, I, I guess we can call it. The background's going to have a distinct pattern, so I wanted this to ha not really have a pattern to it. I don't do well with chaos, but uh, controlled chaos I can handle. Uh, kind of describes my craft room most days. Uh, maybe life. <laughs> All right, we won't get too philosophical here. We're, we're just painting ink onto our lovely latte. <laughs> it's these simple crafty things that keep us sane, right? <laughs> well, I like how this is looking. I've got that lighter color around where his eyes are going to be so that they will show up. And some of this will just get cut off. But I just wanted to make sure that I had some green up at top and bottom and things are kind of balanced out a bit. All right, I'll set that aside to dry. And now that my stripes are fairly dry, I'm going to come back and put an, another layer of ink over the top. That's the nice thing about, well, this isn't watercolor, but it's it acts like watercolor in this case. And it, it, I just like that you can keep layering building up that color because the next step works best with a lot of ink and that is I'm going to spray it all <laughs> so that's going to blend it all even more together and I want to make sure see now it's all sliding into the middle so I was holding that down a little bit had that dry and Here's our lovely latte all cut out. Next, I can glue the frame onto the base. And this frame, I cut out of the same texture dot uh, purple cardstock. And I thought that would coordinate well as my, uh, kind of my, my lines there. They're not black lines. So they can kind of blend a little bit more with what's going on in this card. And just make sure that that's all lined up well and then I can puzzle piece in the rest of the pieces. I chose the ground coffee cardstock as my base, and just in case you would see it, I wanted it to kind of be darker, but I didn't want to use up my favorite color because 
Oh, that plum color. I don't know. Something about it. It's just different than everything else. And I just like the feel of that plum color that's blending with the reds. I don't know. It's a rich color, I think. I added some ground coffee for the coffee. Seems appropriate. And gold metallic paper is the foam on this coffee or this latte, I guess. I don't know. I'm a straight black coffee drinker, but I thought the gold would look good for this kind of fall look. We're going to add gold elements on different parts of the card today as well. Gold embossing and gold paste in the stencil, which is so rich and pretty. All right, so adding on the latte's face, and I just think he's so cute with that, with that classic lawn fawn smile we all know and love and there he is and then I'm going to add back in the purple for his eyes and mouth and I added enough glue behind him so that I can just add those in and there's some glue there that's gonna hold that together add some glue to the handle and add that pretty watercolor paper and now we can start with the flippy flappy. So here are the four pieces I'm going to use. I cut a piece of paper three and three quarters by five inches and I'm lining it up so that that die is in the center with the arrow facing down. And once I have that all lined up, I'm going to take some low tech tape and make sure that that stays put and run that through the die cut machine. This creates the base for the flippy flappy. It cuts out part of it, but it also creates score lines. And I wanna fold my paper on those score lines on each one. They're about a quarter of an inch apart there in the center. And so I'll fold them all down one way, and then I'll turn the paper over and fold them all the other way. I want this to be very flexible. The next piece I have here is the handle. I find the back side of both the handle and the main paper and thread that little piece through to the first score line. Once I have that there, I can fold it down and add some strong double-sided tape. This is quarter inch double-sided tape. Now you could fold it down this way or the other way, it really doesn't matter. It's going to hold that handle onto the main mechanism. All right, now I have it facing forward. I can attach the gift card holder and again I'm going to use some strong tape. This is eighth inch double-sided tape. I'm using a stronger tape because people are going to be pulling on this and I don't want it to just fly right off. All right, I'm lining this up so everything is straight together and I see a little bit, just a little bit of that edge of the piece I attached it to that gives it a little room to move. Flipped it back over, so now it's on the back again, and I'm adding some foam adhesive. Now I wanna double this up. That's gonna give it enough room to really do what it needs to to get that gift card out or, or anything you add to the flippy flappy. The key to making this work is to have that foam tape only on the edges, the two edges. It gives enough room for that gift card to get back there, but also just so that there's room for the card to buckle. It needs to kind of buckle in order for this mechanism to work, uh, whether it's a gift card or, or anything you're putting on. All right, I put a little decorative edge to the handle and now I'm going to cut my watercolor paper down to the same size. It's three and three quarters by five. So that gives a nice quarter inch around the entire card. And I thought, should I do white? No, I gotta do that plum color. <laughs> All right, I guess I, I, I'm in love. I don't know, I love that color. It was the color of my bridesmaid dresses. Of course, I chose bridesmaid dresses that anyone could wear for any occasion, right? No, they probably hung in the back of their closet till they finally said, ugh, I gotta, I gotta throw this out. <laughs> All right, well, back to the card. I adhered that panel to the card itself, 
And now I can take off that release paper and add the mechanism right in the center of my card. Now this is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. And I'm gonna put tape runner all around. I can put it everywhere except for that center mechanism and add my panel. I was so excited about seeing if this would work and yes, it works great. Uh, but wanted to stencil on that panel and really that would have been a lot easier if it was not attached to the card yet. I really wanted to use it though. So I was being very careful and I took this beautiful gold paste. Now it has a bit of a shimmer to it and I'm spreading that all around, just trying to get it on that panel, not anywhere else. And thankfully this is raised up because of that double thickness of foam, but I'm just working my way around this stencil with the paste and being as careful as I can. Lift it up and oh, it's gorgeous. Just taking my scissors and going around the edges to get anything that's kind of hanging off the side there. I'm using my finger <laughs> to put, I have a gold finger, gold finger. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, that's, that's uh, old James Bond there. All right, but you can see I'm going around and just getting those edges cleaned off and while that paste is drying, I'm working on my sentiment. So this comes from the Scripty Autumn Sentiments. And I'm using an anti-static powder bag so that I don't have any embossing powder sticking where I don't want it. Used some clear ink, stamping this down. And I've got some Lawn Fawn Gold embossing powder that I'm going to use. Now I stamped this twice because this is on that textured dot paper and I just wanted to make sure I didn't have any problems with having my word look as it should and not have those little dots get in the way and I melted that with my heat gun and now I'm going to cut that out with the coordinating die using my die cut machine. So that's ready to add to the card and I'm gonna start gluing things together. The Magic Iris Fall Leaves add-on makes a great background. I'm layering two together and just gonna shift them over so that both are visible and decide where I want that on my card. Now that my stencil paste is all dry, I'll put the center back inside to keep a consistent color in the background. And now I can glue that onto my panel and adhere down the cup as well. So I decide he's gonna be up a little bit so that I can put that scripty word down on below him. So the word grateful, uh, one of the English words that are just spelled wrong, right? They're spelled wrong, it's grateful. Or, yeah, well, all right. Uh, so now I'm adding additional leaves, bring in some of that orange color I have a lighter orange and a darker orange, and these leaves come from the same die set. It's from the Magic Iris Fall Leaves add-on, so it's nice to have those additional pieces to add in and, and really build up the wreath look that I'm going for. So I'm just trying to figure out what should go where, give it some balance, dark on both sides, light on both sides. It's fun. This is the fun part, arranging everything. Well, I glued those down, and now I'm putting glue on the back of the scripty word. Adhere that down, and then I need a secondary sentiment. It also comes from Scripty Autumn Sentiments, and I'm going to heat emboss that in gold on a little flag, a little banner. And that banner comes from the mini pop-up box, but there are a lot of little banners or you don't even need to have a banner. You could just do a strip of paper, but I'm curving my sentiment to go along with this curved banner. Inked up the stamp and I'll stamp that down, sprinkle on some gold embossing powder, and then heat that up to melt it with the heat tool again. And here it is all set to go. I was deciding where I wanted to put this banner. I think that's where I ended up, but I thought, oh, too much, too much. For, can you have too much plum color? No, you can't. But it, just for the eye, the flow, 
<laughs> I had to put some orange in there and kind of play around with it a little just to make sure I have it tucked in the way I want. I put some adhesive on the back and slipped it in. So the last part of this is, well, we need a gift card to go on the gift card holder. And I've got little mini dots. I'm going to use three of them because I know that will keep it where it needs to be. And I also know that a person can easily take that off without uh, tearing anything. They can get to the gift card and a Dunkin' Donuts gift card because, you know, good coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and it also, look at that. It goes great with my card. Uh, I did not plan that. But, but I'm happy that it's so. So there it is. I'm so very grateful. And here's a token of my appreciation. A flippy flappy gift card for a latte. Maybe it's a pumpkin spice latte. It's that time of year. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and it inspired you to try the flippy flappy interactive die. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.